Good afternoon, everybody. I wanted to take you through uh, about four different things in one video. This is kind of my normal sort of workflow, as people like to call it. Uh, after you do this for a while, you become quite efficient at, I, I don't want to call it multitasking, but doing task in sequential orders. There's not really, uh, multitasking is a bit of a misnomer. Nobody can really multitask. You have to do one thing at a time. <laughs> So when you do those things in a in an organized order, um, like unwrapping your your petri dish before you get started, um, and then I'm gonna you know flame my scalpels, and then I'm gonna you know get my spawn bag ready. <laughs> it's not really multitasking. So uh, here we go. Uh, I've been through a lot of this already, so I'm just going to kind of do it this time. If you guys have questions later, that'd be great. Uh, the main point of this is I'm going to make a bag up spawn. I'm going to put my culture into long-term storage using water, sterile water, sterile tap water in this fancy stand-up tube. I'm also going to put it into sterile water, which I've autoclaved in this nice glass bottle with a metal cap. See, it's got a little insert in there. Some of the bottles you'll find, you'll just have to test them. Some of them, the, the insert will stand up some to the pressure cooker, some of them won't. Um, you just put your water in there and kind of loosely cap it. It really depends, you'll just have to figure it out. It depends on your pressure cooker, how hot it gets, etc., etc. Um, these PP5 vials, they're nice. These cost about, well, you see there, the, the label thing kind of melted, but I don't know, these cost about a quarter each. But again, you can see there, it got a little messed up in the autoclave. Make sure you leave these a little bit loose, just so when they um, when they cool down, they don't pull a vacuum. It'll just like kind of crush it, you know, like suck in. So it's not it's not really a concern that's gonna blow up. It's more of that they're gonna kind of like get deformed when they cool off. Um, I'm also gonna use a uh, an auger slant. So you notice here they started making these fancy um, stand-up ones now. So they're about the same price. These guys are meant to go on a rack and they're also called centrifuge tubes. If you're looking for these on the internet, they're called centrifuge tube. These are meant to essentially pellet something down in the bottom there, like bacterial cell suspensions. Um, and these also have that, but it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to work with. If you've ever used these, you're, you're gonna essentially, if you're working with bacteria and trying to pellet something, you're gonna try to be pulling something under the bottom of there with the pipette. So it's probably better to have an unobscured view um, or unobstructed view. This thing is meant to stand up, but if you are using this for something else, it might be, might be problematic. Also, this probably wouldn't fit in a standard uh, centrifuge, I think they call them carousels. Uh, the little holder thing, the little basket that they use to spin these around. Um, they're designed for these. These have been around for probably 30, 35 years in this, in this design. They're what we used to call falcon tubes. Now they have different manufacturers, but whatever. They're 50 mLs. They also sell 15 mL ones um, that I don't have floating around here, but um, they have, I think, now 5 and 10 mL. It just depends on what you want, but I like working with the 50 mL ones. Um, they're, they're nice and handy, and they're not too big. So these are stand-up water storage. Again, I pull this out. I pulled one out of this here. You can see those little chunks floating around in there. I pulled one of these chunks out the other day, and this was, gosh, that's almost one, two. That's almost, that's like two years and, gosh, almost two years and three months old. And I pulled out a little chunk there, and you can see right there, growing perfectly fine. Huh? Look at that. What do you know? Just like we used to do back in the old lab in the in the good old days, uh, just like the ATCC does and most other tissue culture collections, they store in water. You guys, this is the simplest. Slants are great, but slants are really meant for you to basically kind of keep in the fridge and pull out, like maybe every six months or every year. These water vials, if you keep them stood up in a in a in a relatively undisturbed place. They're not shaking around, you're not shaking them, and they're not contaminated. These will literally last for years, you guys. I'm telling you, it's dead simple. There are references out there where where people have pulled out cultures that were 30 years old, Basidiomyces cultures that were 30 years old, and revived them, um, just like I did. Like, that's only four days old. So that culture that I pulled it from has been sitting in my closet for almost two and a half years. And I pulled that out and it started growing within four days. I don't know how well you can see that, but it looks perfectly fine. So you guys, I'm saying, man, these bottles, these are like leftover drink bottles, like sports drinks, they're glass, they're free, they're garbage basically. Now, if you wanna get fancy and you know spend a quarter on one of these, these work perfectly fine too. Anywho, let me just do it. 
So what I'm going to do, here you go, fully colonized plate. I normally wouldn't let it grow to the edge, but um, this one, again, is about two months old and I need to do something with it. So I'm going to flame my two scalpels here. I always got like a scalpel kind of flamed and ready to go um, because you don't want to be reaching into a, a plate with, um, with, a, with a super hot scalpel. So again, I did this on another video, so I'm just going to tell you what I do. My, my patty rice here, I'm just going to slice off the top of this polypropylene bag. Again, I don't know how big they are. These are the bags they sort of like use for curry and, and soup and stuff here. You can get it all sizes. So get my helpful scalpel nice and hot. Go right in the middle. Slice the top off that bag. Grab my other scalpel. That's a little bit cooler. And you might want to open this a little bit here. Uh, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. I'm kind of running out of room. I'm going to cut. Again, I don't use the whole plate. I, I'm a little bit concerned, if not even bothered, by the people that put the whole plate in. Near the edges of the plate is where the contamination is. I'm going to only grab, let me just draw real quick on the bottom. I'm only going to grab like half of that plate. Right, that's a crappy like half circle, but you get the idea, right? I'm, again, I'm drawing backwards here, guys. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm basically going to grab like half of that plate, and I'm going to do it with a cool down scalpel. Okay, so I'm going to inoculate my spawn. Okay, close my plate. I'm going to leave my scalpel sit there for a second. I'm going to close up my bag of spawn. And you're gonna have to develop a little technique to do this if you choose to use bags get some of the air out so I can roll this down on itself and again whatever you want to do man I try to get as a little bit of the air out staple it through the creek like where it's out oh, just ran out of staples again <laughs> I'm not gonna do it one-handed this time <laughs> all right I'm reloaded <laughs> Who has it got me on that? Some of you guys got that reference. That's a Scarface reference. Ah, Carlito's Way reference. Uh, not Scarface. I'm going to label this Al Pacino, Carlito's Way. Uh, and I'm going to label this today is, there you go, Bing Bong. And usually when I do this, uh, I, I kind of mash this down. I don't know how, you guys, sorry, the camera's a little bit high. I'm, I'm not dealing with a perfect, I just kind of mash that about. Give it a couple rock and roll back and forth. So that is my spawn done. I'm gonna let that sit for about five or six days and then I'll do the shake. I don't wanna call it break and shake because I'm gonna do it before it's actually really fully colonized. So see all those little chunks, they'll grow out nicely after about five or six days and then I'll do the same thing. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and come back here. So while I got my plate out, I'll call my hands again. Don't catch yourself on fire. So here's where the long-term storage, and that's probably what I'm gonna call this video, long-term storage. First off, let me give my scalpel just a little bit of flame here. And since I've already got this all, you know, opened and everything, I might as well do all this stuff at one time. So I'm gonna sub, sub to my new plate. Let me, there you go, that's a little better. So let me, see what I'm doing, you guys? I'm gonna cut because my scalpel was a little bit hot, make my first two cuts and then I'm gonna go back here and make more cuts because, remember, little tiny piece, I don't need much. I don't wanna really be using my scalpel and I'm exclaiming my scalpel again because I'm talking. There's so much stuff that flies out of your mouth. So you guys see, yeah, I've done my sub already, that's done. How about long-term storage? Don't touch the rim. Going here, I dropped a piece, just put it sort of on the side. Might fall down. You can flame this if you want. You can, uh, I've been having pretty good luck with this. Again, you guys don't touch the rim, right? You want the inside to mate perfectly with the rim. Turn that down. It's a little bit warm, so I'm not gonna tighten it down right now. I'll, I'll label that in a second. See, I dropped a piece. Eh, that's why I cut multiple pieces. Okay, since I'm talking again, I would have done all this probably in like, probably within about 30 seconds, but water storage. Two options here. Let me get that old one out of the way. That's that guy's done. So notice how the, the water has kind of gotten a little bit yellow. That's because the agar that I use, it's still MEA, PDA. I'm using a slightly different version now, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think some people will say go to water agar before you put them in a long-term storage. I don't think it's really necessary. I mean, if you put the volume there, 
you know, I'm going to put three or four strips of this agar media in this, like, that's about 50 cc's of water. Um, it's going to get diluted, and, and it just, like, obviously it worked. Like I said, that's over two years old, and it worked perfectly fine. I've pulled cultures out that have been five or six years old. To be honest, the way the world's working these days, in five or six years old, that culture, that'll be old news, right? Well, moved on. <laughs> Maybe to some of my cultigens. So here's the cool thing about jars that have, uh, I should say containers that have metal lids and glass lips, you can flame the hell out of them. So really, literally burn the hell out of them. So if you're working in an SAP and you're a little bit more worried about airflow, if I flame this and that remains warm for a few seconds, that gives me some time. So I'm gonna come back here, cut strips. This is not hard, you guys. See how I've done that? Pick them up one by one get them in there again I kind of got some on the lip there that'll be okay and this takes a little bit of a technique again I would prefer not to be doing this like backwards for the camera but you guys get the basic idea right here again okay now see good example that thing just touched the side I'm gonna throw it away that's good enough right I do not want to introduce things into my vial. If you're going to take the time to do this, do it right. Label properly, do it right. So I've got three chunks in there. There was one of those was actually two chunks. That is way more than enough. You don't want to fill this up or whatever. If something is wrong, just like LC, um, if something's wrong, it's wrong already, right? So it doesn't matter if one of those strips, you do not want to introduce anything in here. If a single, single bacterium gets in there, that whole thing is screwed, you guys. I've spent months and lots of time and lots of plates trying to clean up agar that's or LC that's contaminated. You do not want to do it. Do it right the first time. Make sure your water's sterile. Make sure your container's sterile. Make sure you adequately uh, sterile, you know, you follow aseptic technique. Okay, last one, you guys, here. PP5. I've started to really, really like these. Like I said, they cost, I don't even know. They're seven baht here, which is like, I don't know, a seventh of a dollar. What is that? About 15 cents or something like that. Uh, 14 cents. I don't know, 13. I can't do math anymore. Anyway, I'm going to heat this up again. And uh, I've been loving these things primarily because they stand up like that. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm going to carefully the, the different manufacturers, again, I'm going to cut strips. Different manufacturers, uh, they don't have to be strips. You want to get chunks. Some people, you guys, with your auger punches and whatever, don't bother, seriously. Like, it's a waste of time. The more time you spend with this plate open, and the more time you spend punching little symmetric circles, out of your egg. Notice how I'm, I'm touching the inside. That's okay. Just don't touch the outside. See, look. Oh, now see that one touched the side of the egg plate. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go over here. Notice how I'm still staying away from the edges, you guys. The edges are dirty, right? So I'm going to do this even more. I'm going to take that out. So uh, that's garbage. So I'm going to, Jesus, blame this for a second. It's getting warm in here. Cover this up and made it with the inside of the, the cap. And that's it. Bam. I'm going to save this plate. Right? Now notice I didn't touch, hopefully, and I haven't contaminated. I and This is where all this stuff would have taken me like a minute, minute and a half tops. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to save the old plate. I see a lot of people throwing plates away and I don't know why because, you know, throw them in a garbage bag, but don't throw them away. Don't throw them in your garbage. And also... You know, the garbage man sees some weird stuff like this in your garbage every day. They might get like a little suspicious, you know? So if you're going to throw these away, you guys, especially if you live in the States, uh, you know, don't like, you know, it's like clippings, you know, clippings from your uh, indoor garden. You don't throw them in the garbage, right? Especially because you got nosy garbage men. They like to know what you're doing in the residential neighborhoods. Um, again, so uh, that's it pretty much, you guys. So we have... Long-term water storage in glass. You can get these anywhere. It could be a whole freaking quart jar if you wanted to do that. Problem is it's gonna be hard. So when I pulled this out, I basically got my handy dandy tweezers here. Eh, back to the tweezers. 
Got in there, got it a little bit sideways, pulled out a piece, put it on my agar, let it dry out for 10 minutes or so, wrapped it up, there you go, bam. Two-year-old culture, didn't have to sub it, didn't have to do anything, it's, it's all good to go. Um, so that was that. And so, and then I have my PP5, polypropylene 5, that's the recycling code, I'm gonna label this in a second. I have my kind of older conical style here, centrifuge tubes. Remember, I'm gonna label that in a second. Oh, I wanted to, to notice, uh, I wanted to say one more thing, guys. You, you put your label on here, okay, and your date. I do the date like the way we do it here in Asia. I do it day and month and year. Um, so I'm gonna write that on there. I do a couple things, you guys. Uh, I already ripped off a piece of tape, which is, of course, stuck to the hood now. Make sure you cover up these letters. Sharpies are great, but if you get this saturated and it's cold and wet and cold and hot and wet and it's got condensation under the tape and you're spraying it with alcohol, that thing, that label will rub right off. Notice how this one, this is a brand new tube. Already see how it's chipping off there? That's bad. That's as bad as having a contaminated culture, right? You pull that out and it's contaminated. So put a piece of cellar tape over there and then also make sure you wrap the top. These things do not need oxygen. Guys, there's enough oxygen in there for that culture to live forever. I have noticed they will slow down and, and try to be a little bit like maybe cleaner and neater than I am, but I'm, I'm, I just noticed the video's at 15 minutes. So there you go. I give it a tap. Make sure that piece is in the bottom. I want it to grow from the bottom up. The upper part will be easier to deal with. So when you're taking things out of these slants, you're gonna start working from the top. So there's some different you know, kind of ideas. That that will be older towards the bottom, which, you know, maybe you want older. It depends on who you, who's kind of, uh, I don't know, theory you, you <laughs> believe when it comes to senescence. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that. That's a whole other, like, six videos. Anyway, label properly, guys. I think that's it because I'm, I'm approaching the 17-minute mark now. Um, I think that's it, you guys. Oh, culture storage. Keep these at room temperature. If you want to, you throw them in the fridge. Again, the, the jury's kind of out on that. Uh, tropical tropical cultures in a refrigerator. I believe if they're kept at four degrees Celsius, which is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is your, your typical you know domestic refrigerator, they should be fine. Um, I, I, I don't see any reason why. There's been a like old myths about like, oh, it'll kill the pans and it'll kill tropical ones. I don't believe any of them. Uh, like a lot of things in this hobby, you know, there, there's old wives tales or whatever myths, whatever the PC term is for them now. Anyway, room temperature or refrigerator. This, room temperature, room temperature. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap these later with my, my cling film or my, uh, uh, you, I, you can use parafilm if you want. I'm, I'm kind of being an anti-parafilm guy now. Uh, I like food wrap and grafting tape. Uh, and again, probably, I'm doing this backwards, you guys, so keep in mind, this is like not the way I normally do it. You can probably do it a lot more efficiently. Uh, I'm gonna wrap that up and I'm gonna wrap the other one up and then I'm gonna store those. So these, uh, keep them at room temperature. Room temperature, you guys. If you wanna, if you feel compelled to put them in the refrigerator, I don't really see why. You don't need to. Leave them in a stable, dark place. Don't shake them. Don't do this. This is not LC, you guys. It's not LC. This is long-term storage. What's gonna happen, it'll form a little film on the top and oftentimes, when you're pulling one of these long-term water storage vials, you'll just need to pull off a little bit of that mycelium that's formed on the top. Um, and, uh, and again, I don't know what I'll say, you guys. I could probably keep going on, but oh, thank you for listening. Oh, wow, this is the, 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 the longest one I've made so far. Phone memory is probably gonna be need to, need to be cleared. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, um, I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye, uh, have a good day or night.